Okay. Well, we welcome everybody to uh, class here and to uh, those of you watching around the world. Welcome and a Merry Christmas if you're in receive already. So um, we, um, we are on our fourth lesson here in leadership of the, um, our study as it applies to Sunday school in the church. And I hope that tonight as we talk about um, curriculum and and the finances of the church. Those are the two things we're going to cover tonight. It will be helpful and informative. But before we dig in, let's pray and ask God's blessing on our time together. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for this, this time together. And I would pray that um, our church and churches that are faithful to your word around the world, Lord, would be um, very careful as to what they're teaching and how they systematically go about teaching. So uh, use this time for our benefit and for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, we're going to uh, uh, talk tonight about the purpose of curriculum and the use of curriculum in Christian education. We've been doing this for several years, and I remember uh, specifically with our, our Vacation Bible School curriculum several years ago, there was a company, a publisher that we had been with for quite a while, and um, uh, we noticed a change in their, um, in their curriculum, and it, it just was less and less missionary story. They dropped the missionary story, so we supplemented that, and we did our own. And then we were um, looking at the actual content that they gave, and of course the purpose of VBS uh, one of the main purposes is evangelization. Many children that are never involved in Sunday school, never involved in church or anything like that, are here, and we want them to hear the good news that Christ died for their sins and they can come to know the forgiveness of their sins. And after several years, we found that for our our purposes, and so um, we we threw that out and and went with something that did a better job. By the way, they had wonderful graphics. Um, the the uh, handouts were beautiful. The grass substance was gone. So when we talk about effective curriculum, it's got as a whole and, and as well as as a, a individual and personal needs. So. Um, in our case, that curriculum uh, meeting our needs means that for Vacation Bible School, we wanted to cover the gospel and for that to be a vital part of, of, what, we're, of what we're doing. So um, uh, it's important for the, uh, the study to, number two, correspond positively with the aims and objectives in order that they may be accomplished. Um, again, we, we want people, if they're here for any length of time, we want to do our part in making sure that they know the Bible. Our curriculum begins with... Um, twos and threes in our, our four and five-year-olds, they go through the whole Bible, all the history portions in that window of time, all the Bible stories. Um, you know, the cross didn't just drop out of nowhere onto Golgotha's hill. It didn't happen that way. It all comes in a sequence. It comes in a narrative 
that narrative beginning in Genesis where the world was perfect and perfect people, a perfect place, and in paradise, and then because of sin, the world became unperfect, and then Jesus comes, or, or God comes and says, there will be a way to reconcile with me through the Messiah that will come. And so the Old Testament, you have that all uh, unfold. Um, so we, we, we look at um, uh, Scripture in a, in a context. If you don't have that context, what, take any word, take any word. For example, the word that I had up here and I say run. What does that mean? Do you know what it means if there's no context? Run could mean um, a, a, uh, a run on, uh, they say there's, there's a run on the bank. Could mean that you're going to go on a 5K run. It could mean um, that, that you're, um, uh, there's, there's a, um, uh, a run of an issue of, of a magazine, you know, we're, we're running. So, I mean, they, you, you see what, so when, if a word must have a context, certainly truth needs to have a context. And so when we come to curriculum, the purpose of it is to, is to provide that context. It makes sense. Do you know? Uh, these, this is a missionary group that goes to um, uh, unreached people groups. Uh, a, a couple of the, uh, of the Musser boys are, are involved in new tribes. And they, Paw Paw New Guinea, or they, I mean, they are in places that I've never heard of. And um, I watched a video from New Tribes where they didn't have a printed language. And so what they did was, through drama, they, they told the Bible story starting in Genesis. And the whole town would come time, evidently, you know. <laughs> the, the, uh, 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 not a lot going on, but they came and they, they would watch these dramas. And they were so into this when they actually came down to the, to the narrative of because they knew about sin, they knew that, that man couldn't be connected with God until that sin problem was, was taken care of. And then they introduced the person of Jesus Christ who came, lived a perfect life. And then when they uh, were, these, the whole town just, and this was in this video, just was in a total meltdown, weeping and crying. How could they do this to this righteous man? They got it. They got it. And then, of course, there was the resurrection, and, and it, it, it all um, uh, made sense because they started at the beginning of the story and, and gave the narrative that, that and, and that's what curriculum is supposed to do. It's supposed to set all of this up so that... Um, uh, number two, our aims and our objectives are accomplished, and of course, our aim. Three, sound. There are two things that we want to look at when we come to um, doc being doctrinally sound. There's what that what is said is correct. And we want to look for the exclusions. Are there things they're just skipping? If, if, let's say we, we get some, we're looking at some Sunday school curriculum. We have A, B, and C. Um, uh, and, and we look at these and we say, you know what? They're not 
doing anything with the first 12 chapters of Genesis. What's, what's that? Or they come down to the, quote, gospel, but there's no mention of sin. You know, um, we had, I'd seen some, some VBS curriculum one year, and it was all on, on, on you know, uh, God is love. And, uh, and, and, and Jesus is joy. And it was all these things. Are those things true? Of course they are. But l love and mercy um, are, are not really that meaningful if God isn't holy and just. So if he's holy and just, we're in trouble and we need love and mercy. So then... <laughs> You know, so it all, so it all, so we look, what isn't there? Are, are they skipping some vital things? So when we say doctrinally sound, you know, that's where we're going. Number four, there, there, should, ha there should have continuity. Uh, however, each lesson should be self-contained. Um, so um, we take a theme and um, we, we develop that theme. It may be on the life of, of uh, Joseph. Or it may be on the life of Jesus Christ. Well, there's several things in the life of Christ we'd love to emphasize. The beginning of his, his baptism, the beginning of his ministry, the miracles, his teachings. Um, and then, of course, the, the, the last week of his life, beginning with Palm Sunday and going through. So we want to emphasize all those things. Where you, but you, to tell all of that at one shot is kind of difficult. Each lesson, um, uh, a truth that they can take home with them today and something they can um, learn today. And, and an application every Sunday, not you go 12 weeks and then we tell you how all this makes sense. Every week needs to make sense, somehow. Person that comes the very first time to be able to get something. And so we want to have something that's on the lower shelves that that brand new person could, could get a hold of and say, oh, that was good, I, I learned something today. But at the same time, you want to have something for the child that has been there the first seven years of their life and, and wants to answer every question, too, and something that, that maybe they didn't know. And, and that would be true in a, in a, young, in, in a teen or young adult or, or an adult. So there's something for the new person, but there's always something for the one that's not new, that, that uh, something that they could learn. Um, I mean, and, and when we eat our food, uh, it's not all meat. You know, we have, we, 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 we have um, you know, some salad and, and you've got a side, you have some potatoes and, and you know, there's some, and, and, and um, uh, so you, a little dessert, I mean, you know, there's, 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 uh, there's a little, little, bit of, of all the food groups there, so to speak. And so when we come to breaking the bread of life, we want to hear everybody out of Sunday school and go into the service and you're trying to have something for everybody. You have young, you have old, you have everybody in between. It's a challenge. And, and, and it, it, it's in the Sunday school one of the values of being uh, age graded is you can customize and tailor the applications for the uh, for the group that's that's there. Person that goes to Sunday school their whole life should continue to grow in the knowledge of the Lord and of His Word. We talked a little bit last week about church plants. There's there's a um, a number of brand new churches across the land that are being started. And, and you say, well, that's good. Well, yes, um, but 
one of the things, and you won't notice it right away, and the sad thing is by time people do catch on what's going on, it may be too late. They're not, they're not doing Sunday school. They're not, uh, what, the, well, here, here's, here's what happens. You come, and they peel off the kids to a large group, like children's church kind of thing, and then the adults go to the service. So now you have some of this maybe eight, nine, ten years old, that's n maybe never or very rarely been in a worship service. They have no idea how to um, uh, process um, that experience. That's not necessarily a good thing. They need that. And then, church, Dad, please, you know, I, just from a teaching aspect, let alone the fellowship part of it. So, so you don't have the connection. You don't have the the um, opportunity for um, for Bible study. In 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 Bible preaching, the guy gets up there and says, "Thus saith the Lord." You know, this is right. This is wrong. This is the way. Walk ye in it. You know, it's pretty straight up. In a Bible class, you say, well, yeah, but why? You know, I don't see that here. Help me. Well, good, good. Let's, let's look at the text and see why. is important, and uh, we want to provide that for, we've provided it for the past generations. We want to provide it for this generation. And, and what's important about the Bible stories? Context. So we, we learn how all these pieces fit together so that the salvation makes sense. Um, here's, here's the danger, in my humble but accurate opinion. <laughs> um, if, if young people if we don't take the time to slow down and teach them, um, this is the Bible, this is why it's credible, this is why it is a good uh, resource, it's, it's given by God, and here's the reasons that, here's, here's the supporting evidence that it's from God, and here's why we should follow it, and here's what it says. We're laying a foundation for the rest of their life. We're going to have a whole generation of young people that are kind of going to be pragmatic. If it, you know, if it works, I'll do it. If, if it feels good, I'm, I'm in. The problem with that is when the wind blows, the roots aren't down real deep. Um, Josh McDowell, who's written extensively, evidence that demands a verdict, and he's spent his life on college campuses, has said he's gone to several um, big Christian concerts. And here's a, here's a young lady, you know, just, you'd think she was just on the front porch of heaven, tears running down her face, hands in the sky, praising the Lord. So after the dust settles a little bit and they're singing it, uh, McDowell comes over there and says, tell me, who's God? You know, and, and um, who's Jesus Christ? Um, and trying to ask them some things that they believe about the basic tenets of Christianity. The answers, he wrote a whole article on this, the answers that he was getting would make your head spin. They didn't have a clue. And these were the good kids. These were the ones. They're, they're not at a, at, a, at a secular concert. They're at a Christian. You know, so this, you know, you, there, there's some interest there, you would think. So um, when all the smoke and mirrors are gone and when the, you know, when, the, when the lights go out and the band is finished, we want our congregation, our young people, our adults to be to not just say we do that, but to put teeth to that.
uh, move on and, and, and uh, fill your, uh, okay. Three common views on Sunday school curriculum. Um, you have the, uh, uh, the poor traditional, which basically Bible content is the whole thing. The difficulty with that is we're not just filling the head. We want it to go to the heart. So that's where we want application. We, we want them to know that this isn't just um, uh, so you can name the 12 tribes, you know, and you can spew out the, the number of the, uh, uh, the major prophets, the minor prophets, and you can, you give all this knowledge, but um, so what? I mean, we're not, now what? Where, where do we go with this? So we don't want just curriculum, Bible content. We want to have application also. Number two, the secular or the religious liberal, it's all experience centered. And um, only, quote, relevant content is applied. Number two, um, secular and religious liberal, you have, it's experience centered. Um, um, God is love, how do you feel about that? Only relevant content is, is applied. Well, you know, we don't want to get much and talk about the Trinity. We don't want to talk about, um, you know, who God is, the, you, you know, the attributes of God. Or, you know, let's, let's uh, talk about world hunger. And let's talk about, well, unless we talk about world hunger in the context of the gospel, um, go to hell. So, you know, we, we want to do better than that. And, and often with the, with the liberal curriculum, it's more centered on uh, an ideology rather than the Bible. And so let's move quickly to the, to the third kind of curriculum, the spiritual um, curriculum or uh, scriptural, I'm sorry, scriptural cu curriculum. It should be Christ-centered rather than Bible-centered uh, because the Bible is Christocentric. That's, it, it all points to Jesus. It all ties in. So um, it's, it's not um, on sinful human life but on divine eternal life and introduces the living word, not just the written word but the living word who is Jesus Christ. So all, all roads lead to, um, to Jesus Christ. And um, I think um, even in, in, you can have, one of the mistakes I think of a new teacher in taking curriculum because they give you so much, it's like getting a drink from the fire hydrant. There's a whole bunch that you just don't get. You, Keep it simple. Uh, so if, if a student left with one thing and they did that 52 times a year, it's a good year. It's a good year. We, we try to give them too much, they walk away with nothing. And, and, and so I think a goal of a, of a good teacher would be to, to say, listen, um, I'm going to cover several things, but here's what I'm really going to drive home. This is today's takeaway. This is what I want them to leave with. And, and um, we, um, uh, we have um, a, a Bible-centered but a Christ-centered curriculum, and that's, that's what you want to have in, in, um, in a good Sunday school uh, curriculum. Dem? I, you, I lost you. Yeah, okay, so scriptural curriculum alone is bad? No, no, that's, that's what I, uh, of the three, that'd okay. be our choice. Okay. Yeah. If it's just Bible centered, um, we're just, that's more the content. We want to show 
how, yes, this story of Daniel is quite riveting and, and, and no, the wild beast didn't get him, but, but you know what? He, that's because he had a relationship with God and you and I can. So it, it takes the story and brings it around to Christ. Do you have a relationship with God? And it's, so it's not just like number one, Bible content only. It's, it's, we're taking that Bible story, we're taking that Bible truth, and we're saying, how does this relate to them in their relationship with Jesus Christ? Does that help? Yeah. Does, yeah. So, good question. So, um, uh, uh, we, we want to um, teach the a teacher should constantly be saying, so what? So what? Why am I, okay, here's truth, but for what purpose? So it's not just a matter of uh, did, they, did they learn about Elijah um, in, in, in the uh, leaving in the whirlwind. So what? Is there any application here that we can give them? Because they may not, be leaving in a whirlwind, you know, chariots of fire. So how do we, how do we bring this and give an application for their life? And I uh, say, boy, that's a big, tall order. How do we do that? Ask up, braid it not. We, we, we do our work, but then we get on our knees and say, Lord, you know, just like the parent, I have truth, but how do I apply truth to this child? Train up a child. Should this one go? I would much rather have a teacher that was just coming to the, to, to, to the next day with some fear and trepidation and saying, Lord, I need your help. I just don't know how this is going to go. Rather than a spiritual element to this that, that we need to uh, take it all to, to the Lord. We want to talk about finances in the Sunday school. Um, first of all, um, the Bible talks about money. The Old Testament, New Testament uh, talks about money because the Lord knows where we live. And um, while we don't, we don't live for money, we need some of it. <laughs> You know, um, I've often said, I don't need it. It's just the people I owe. You know, they, they, they need it. Yeah, so I, I mean, you know, and so, um, and I believe that God uses tangible things to teach us intangible lessons. And so we, we, we learn that um, uh, with, with um, as we study the Bible, um, we will run across passages that have to do with worldly, uh, with material things, with, with, with our resources. In a church, the deacons should handle the money. I was back in Chicago several years ago and the phone rang. As one of our good, wonderful, fine, upstanding men of the church, he called and he said, he said, Sam, listen, I had to call you because I, I heard it and I just, I don't know where to go with this. And, and since your name was brought up, I thought I'd call you. I, I, I heard that you were um, taking money from the church. Now, this guy had been around a long time and, and, and I, I'm, so I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, let, let's just, before we go to third base, let's, let's start at home. I said, now, let me ask you a question. Who takes the offering? Well, you know who takes the offering. The ushers take it. Okay. Then what happens? Well, I see the deacons up there. They collect it. And, and, and of course, at that time in Chicago, we had uh, a couple deacons would come. And they would, because it was so crowded in the church, they would go up the stairs, out the choir room door, down the main walk, into the foyer, and then the first office was where the safe was. Still is. 
And being Chicago, they were accompanied by one of our uh, off-duty policemen, always. There was a, so there was a third person in this uh, little, uh, and, and, and of course he was, you know, he was, he, he was uh, locked and loaded. So um, this, was, this was the, so I said, so when, the, when it leaves the plates, where does it go? He said, well, the deacons take it and they bring it into the... I said, okay, now who counts, who counts the money? The, 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 the deacons. And who deposits the money? The deacons. I said, well, it's in the bank. Okay. Well, I don't know. I said, I, 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 I checks... So they have, and he knew. I just, and by this time, he, the, the sun was starting to rise in the east. Um, you know, there has to be a pay order. There has to be a accompanying document. With, there has to be the person that, that uh, um, uh, makes out the check. And then two people, not one, have to sign it. I said, now, did you, where in this circle do I have access to? He said, boy, I wish I had a thought of that when I was talking to them because. I said, well, you know, it's not too late. You can circle back and take them on our little journey and, and walk. The deacons handle the money. That's not because we had a... It's always been that way. It's been that way for two reasons. Number one, because in, in, in Acts 6, when the deacons were given the job of, of uh, taking care of the money... It says that they were given the responsibility to serve tables. And the term is specifically referring to money tables. It, so, because they had that problem with the Grecian uh, widows who were being shortchanged, so they felt, and the Hebraic women were being better taken care of. Uh, racism 2,000 years ago, well, you, you, nothing is new under the sun. So the Hebraic uh, uh, widows were being taken better care of than the Grecian widows, and, and, and they came to the apostles with this problem, and the Lord said, let's get deacons. And so there were resources involved here. Let's get deacons. They're going to handle all this money thing. So from Acts 6, the very first church, this is the plan. And it's a good plan because, number one, um, you have um, the, the, the pastors don't have to worry about that. That's, that's not their concern. They're to give their time and attention to the preaching and teaching of the Word. And the other thing is, it's a preventative from even the possibility of an accusation. So if somebody gives an accusation, there's, the, the, the minute they look into it, they say, well, you, you know, how can you, how can you go anywhere with that? Because it's, it's, that's n something they have nothing to do with. So the, the, the deacons take care of, of the money. The church budget is simply a spending plan that if the money comes in, here's how it will be spent. It's just, that's what our family budget is. I have these obligations, and so when the money comes in, here's where it's going to go. Now, if it doesn't come in, um, uh, then are there any discretionary things here that we can put aside or not take care of until we have our, our, our obligations met. There are what we call fixed obligations. What would those be? Fixed obligations. This is for a church or think of your own family uh, finances. What, what are fixed? Mortgage, Mortgage electric, uh, utilities, uh, 
salaries, taxes. Taxes, yeah, yeah. Salaries. Yeah, you, you have, you have, you. I just said groceries. Oh, yeah, in, in a family, but yeah, you got to, you got to eat. Um, in a, in a, uh, in, in the church, all those things that, you know, the mortgage and the utilities, we have those too. And, um, um, so there's fixed. We had some years ago, some members that moved to California. They joined the church and they, 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 uh, deacons came to the church and said, we're seven months behind on paying our missionaries. And I thought, oh, my soul, I, um, they, you know, um, they were trying to catch it up, well, which is good, you know, but to get there, um, wow. Um, so those are the fixed things. Now, if, if um, um, uh, the job of the deacons is to make sure that what the church voted, here's how the money should be spent, that it indeed is spent that way. The way we have our budget is there's a printout every month that shows every budget item. And when, a, when that pay order that I mentioned earlier is, is written and a check is drawn against that, that particular budget item is debited. And so there's a running account for each line item in the budget so you know where you're at. And if we're over on office expenses, maybe there's a reason. Maybe we bought paper because we got it on sale and we're good for six months. So over six, it's going to even out. Or, um, you know, was it two years ago we had that huge, uh, it's, it's uh, every Sunday it snowed. Or, you know, and man, we had a we had a front end loader down on Wolf Road because you, you had to knock down the pile. You couldn't see around to turn out. It was dangerous. So, okay, we're way up in, in building, and how come? Well, you know, we had some snowplow bells that really threw our budget a curve. So there, there's an explanation, but it, there, there's a spending plan, and we evaluate this monthly, quarterly, annually, and, and um, there's weekly reports we just, we've always felt like more information, the better, because um, the only, t you know, if, if um, there's closed books and you got to have the secret handshake and the secret passcode and all of this to find out what it is, why? What about? Listen, um, anybody can look at our books. Um, and, 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 and say, here's, here's where, here's the deal. You know, here's, here's last month's report. It shows you where every check went. You know, I mean, there you go. So, um, uh, and, and doesn't the, the, the word say in 1 Corinthians 10, 40, or 1440, that let all things be done decently and in order. And uh, we have uh, an internal audit where where people that aren't connected with the, uh, um, that are not deacons and aren't caring for the financial things on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis come in and audit the books and give recommendations how this might go smoother or better. Or, and then we have an external audit, um, an actual accountant that comes in and we pay them and they go through because we want to have a handle on that. So the church budget is a spending plan. Giving makes evangelism possible. We don't want to be a church that the goal is to survive. Made it through another month. You know, we paid ComEd uh, uh, this month. You know, well, we're not here to pay ComEd. We're here to, to hold the light up of the gospel for our community. So we want to take care of those things, but our heartbeat is to get out the gospel. The budget reflects the church's goals. And um, if you will look at a copy of our budget, you will find um, once we get um, past just some of the utilities, much. 15%. or something of of 
uh, what, what are they? There's a there's a money term they use for that. Um, in other words, when you take our assets and liabilities, we owe about 15 percent against our assets. So it's a very good position to be in. But um, we don't want to be encumbered by just paying the mortgage. Uh, about 10, 10 years ago, financing our loan. And from, because we, got, we negotiated like a really good interest, what allowed us to put him on full time. Wasn't that good money spent? And it was just money that before was spent on interest, now we have a missionary in Israel. So our goal is outreach, missions, um, reaching people. And the budget reflects that. Giving needs to be taught through preaching, teaching, um, through testimonies, people sharing, hey, I have uh, given, I've been faithful with the money the Lord has, has given me. I want to give some of that back. And, and so we give, we give testimony uh, about that. I'll, I'll never forget one of my favorite testimonies. A young man, he just, he's a new Christian. He had just joined the church. And he had committed. He didn't know how he was going to do it. But he says, you know, I'm, I, I want to tithe. And uh, he was over at Evergreen Bank. And what was then uh, Evergreen Bank. And um, cashing his he, he had cashed his check, and he, he, he had written out his very first, he never tithed before in his life. I had somebody who came to me one time, they said, you know, I, I really struggle with the tithing is just really throwing me a curve, and I'm looking at him, and I said, I've never heard of this. What is he talking? And then it kind of, oh, tithing. He's talking about Tithing, okay. Well, anyway, he had never tithed before, and so he's 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 writing his he's writing his first tith check, you know, and 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 the thing is, he said, when I write this, this is really by faith, and I'm not recommending this. I'm just telling you the story. Um, I recommend tithing, but you know, uh, he 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 said I. I am going to be in trouble after I write this, but I think God wants me to do it. I believe it's the right thing, so here it goes. So he's cashing his check. He had written the, 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 uh, uh, his first day, and the teller says, Mr., you know, calls his name, and he thought, oh, no, I, I, I blew it on balancing my checkbook again, you know. And... Um, he said, "You know, there's been a there's been a, a, uh, a, a faulty entry here. Your account needs to be corrected." And his heart sunk. And then she gave the amount. Well, number one, the amount was to his benefit. It wasn't a debit; it was a credit. And number two, it was to the penny of what he had just written. And he was all in after that. He said, okay, okay, thank you, Lord. I knew. So he, it was covered. Uh, but, you know, it's, I've often said it's never about money. Because God doesn't need our money. He's not broke. He uses tangible things to teach us intangible lessons. It's really about our faith. We could not do what we do if there weren't some resources to work with. As we're here today, the lights are on, the camera's rolling, the, the Awana is upstairs, and, and, and they have, um, you know, there's, there's comfort control one way or the other, and, um, and, and we'll, we'll go, and, and there'll be a piano that somebody bought, and there'll be hymn books that somebody paid. You, you know, there's just, we live in this world, and it's, but, um, and there will, and we have, we have sent ours, which is um, something that we, we done with our Thanksgiving offering, and it's equivalent to about a month of their, um, of bless you. And, 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 but God uses money to teach us that 
you know, he's, he's, he's there. And so um, the finances of the Sunday school work like this. Everything takes money. Years ago, we were running about um, two-thirds children and one-third adults. All our buildings were filled, and we had no money to build new buildings. People, but if we don't reach, we're going to be done reaching people because we're full. So we began to kind of balance out our Sunday school to where it was more 50-50, 50% 50 children, 50% adults, and the, the offerings came up because adults give, and not the children don't, but, but you know, we, we know children are basically takers and, and, and not givers. So, uh, you know, we were able to do some things and it made possible Orland Park, um, which we wouldn't have been able to do had we not made some of those adjustments. And so we have facilities and we have resources today to continue doing what we've been doing for 65 years. So um, we don't live for, the, for, for this, but it is a reality of, of part of our ministry. So we, we, and it's in the Bible. Lay not up for yourselves treasures in earth, and moth and rust break through, thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth, rust, corrupt, and thieves break through and steal. So, and the Lord always provides. I've often said, what God is in, He energizes and He underwrites. And if He's not in it, you're on your own. <laughs> so, with that, let's close. We'll pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for class. Help us, Lord, to uh, be sensitive to the needs that surround us. Help us to be grateful for what you have given us. And Lord, and generous givers, that the gospel would go forward unhindered. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.